Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun creating today's cards because I was just on a really simple, straightforward run. Now, sometimes I like to get really complicated and other times I like to sit down for just a short amount of time and these ones do not require too many tools or too many products to put together. In fact, we're going to use all the same products for the three cards. Now, the first one, I started off with these three sheets of cardstock. These are from the Playful Paper Pad. I have the four and a quarter by five and a half inch one, and that means that it's exactly a card front size. I took a circle die from the Hero Arts Infinity Circle Dies, and I'm going to run all of these through at the same time. My die cutting machine cuts through all three layers, and then I finally decided at the end that I actually wanted a yellow too. So I have four different uh, colors of circles. I have a little white uh, rectangle there and that measures roughly three and three quarters by five inches. And I'm just setting out how I want my little dots to be on the page, nice and colorful. I'm going to glue these on with some liquid glue because I'm gonna quickly, not quickly, not too quickly, but do this part and then I get out my tea ruler and I just make sure that these are roughly, give or take, on in line with each other so that the others are going to be somewhat even. They don't have to be perfect, uh, but that's the way that I make sure that these ones are somewhat straight. Then I'm going to pop on the next layer. You could either put them directly underneath or you can put them in the gaps like I am at the minute. You could also use any other shape for this. You could even just cut out wonky circles with your scissors, that would look fun too. Any little shapes that are even squares, even diamonds, even stars, anything, love hearts, anything sort of stacked up like this is going to look stunning. I'm choosing four colors from the same paper pad so that everything coordinates. I know the colors go together. I don't have to do any of the thinking at all. I'm putting on these extra little bits just so it looks like the pattern is continuous. This could even be a piece of patterned paper if you look at it. It does have nice texture because we've glued on those extra elements. Now at this point I thought I wanted to make the background a, a different color than white. Um, so I chose to use the Tumbled Glass Distress Oxide ink, which I'm just using that simply because it was the closest color that I had to the blue on uh, that I've put on my little card front there. You could have chosen any of the colors at all. Um, but then once I have done that, I just F quickly added some ink. I recently re-inked all of my Distress Oxides. I went through and re-inked them all and boy does it make a difference. Sometimes I forget what a difference an extra little bit of ink can make to your pad. So mine are nice and juicy at the moment, but that does mean that it's something I have to remember when I'm trying to do techniques where I just want soft and gentle color too. Now I cut out a couple more white circles and I have this ribbon here which I really wanted to use. Now, is it perfect? No. I guess the sort of tartany gingham pattern would be a little bit uh, smaller, a little bit thinner if I had a choice, but that's not what I have. And so I'm going to make this work just fine. I also like that really fine blue one, but unless I wrapped it round and round, I didn't quite see how I was making it work. So I'm going to pop this uh, gorgeous black and white. I love this ribbon and I've kept it forever, but it's time to not hoard it anymore and to use it. So I have a couple of different sizes here for where I would like to put these dots and I'm just deciding which one to put it over top of. Now I simply chose that blue one uh, just because it was sort of in a nice little spot. This is the Layered Summer Bird from Sizzix and I just like this little sentiment. However, the birthday wishes are stacked a little bit funny. So I'm just going to ink up the word birthday. I'm going to use the whole stamp, but I'm just going to sort of stack them differently and I didn't want to cut the stamp apart. So I inked up the birthday first, then I ink up the wishes the best I can, but there's just a couple of little bits that I will dab just um, from the Y, the letters that come down a little bit and sort of stack these directly one on top of the other. Then I will pop a little bit of foam tape. I chose to go a circle just one size bigger than what I already had for the dots um, and that way it didn't take up too much of the card as well. Pop it onto a card base. You can quickly see there when I put it on the white one that it just didn't pop off. I really like the blue background. It's just something a little bit extra. Then pop on the sentiment once I thought it had dried enough that I wouldn't smudge it and this is just Quick, simple card making. This didn't take me very long at all, but we are going to move on and start creating another one as well. 
Now, in the first one, you saw that I cut out four circles from each of those pieces of cardstock. Well, I still have those and we want to keep using them because there's plenty of good cardstock here. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, take some strips from the side because these are going to be longer. Then I'm going to turn the piece sideways and get some shorter strips. If you have scrap strips lying around already, then this is perfect. But I will say that one of my hacks when I'm doing these cards is that I love using the paper from all the same paper pad or paper pack because that means I know this all coordinates really easily. I know I don't have to do any thinking and wondering whether that it actually goes together. I did decide for this one to get a little bit of gold shimmery cardstock as well just for a little bit of interest. But I have all of these scraps here which are now... Uh, a quarter of an inch wide, but they are all different lengths as well. Then I just took a piece of, it's sort of like a slaty gray color, I guess, from the same paper pad, of course, and I am just going to glue these all one by one. Doesn't take long at all. Some of them I want to cut to make sure that they're going to be different lengths to the one previous or the one after it. Just making sure that I alternate between all different lengths and don't have anything the same. I want to make sure that some are really short and some are really long. And this will all come together really, really quickly. This doesn't take long at all. In fact, this one would be pretty good um, if you wanted to mass produce this a little bit more. You could always do wider strips if you were worried about that as well. But it really is a scrap buster and it uses up all those extra little pieces. And I love the idea that we used from the previous card. We use uh, one of the pieces of cardstock and then from this one we're able to keep going and use up more of it. Instead of popping it into some little scrap pile or something like that. And probably forgetting about it if you're me. Uh, so once I have done this I've got it all glued down nicely. You probably could add some double sided tape through the center there. Um, but I like the idea of having all of those uh, glued down. So that's why I use some liquid glue. This is the Doodlebug Happy Birthday set and I love the gorgeous big sentiments in these. I've been using this one a lot. Very versatile. I have the slate grey uh, little bit there which is the same colour as the background. It's just the one that I cut the circles out of from before. I've added some of the sentiment with a Versamark sticky embossing ink. Then some white embossing powder. This is a stark bright white embossing powder melt that and it gets even brighter white when you melt it and then when I was doing this I like the idea of actually having something pop this sort of helps it pop off the background a little bit more so I had a scrap of white paper but this is how my card making goes for me you can let me know in the comment section down below if this is what happens to you to make myself feel better. But once I had this uh, sentiment cut out here, I did use my scissors to trim it a little bit more because uh, I think my blades need changing, which doesn't happen that often with my uh, trimmer, which I love. But you can see without that white bit there, it just sort of sinks into the background. So I had this scrap piece of white paper sitting there ready to go and I thought, brilliant, perfect, I'll use that. I really like that. It, goes in really well with the little border that will be around the outside and I thought it's just a little too wide it's just a little too much so I'm going to trim this down a bit just so that it, there's a little bit less white poking out each side I was happy I put some liquid glue on the back of my sentiment pop it down onto the little piece of white paper and then I realize I it's not enough I don't know that wasn't what I was thinking <laughs> I liked it when it had more <laughs> so right about at this stage you can see I'm, I'm looking at it I'm looking at it I try it and it just doesn't look right and so it's right now I just rescue it and I'm going to rip this off because I don't like it so that's okay I'm then going to get another piece of paper which was not a scrap piece but that's okay and then I'm going to add a little bit more glue pop this down and it's going to fit nicely right across there I'll be able to trim it I use a pair of long bladed scissors to trim down the other side what I think is probably the right amount this time which is probably the amount that I started with before and then we're good to go again I'm going to pop this up on some foam tape to go across the center here. Make sure I trim it first because once I put this on foam tape, you're sort of, your edges aren't together. They're not close enough. And that's when I often will go wrong if I'm trimming it after I've added the foam tape. So trim it before you add the foam tape, pop it up. And then this is going to go right through the center there. And again, these cards are super, super simple, but they end up stunning. I was really happy with all three cards that I ended up making today. 
Then, of course, it's going to go on to a white background. And I think the white background with the white border across the sentiment is just really what makes this card pop. So I like that. I've chosen to use some double-sided adhesive, but you can choose liquid glue, any adhesive that works for you that you know is not going to come undone in time or if it goes through the mail. Line it all up so it's got that gorgeous border and that is card number two finished. Right, card number three, I'm going to stick with the same colors again. I did have to get some more cardstock, but that's okay as well. Now for this one, I'm also going to be using some strips of cardstock. You can do any width you like, and because these weren't scraps that I was using up, I was obviously able to choose whatever I wanted. I chose to go with making sort of random, thicker widths just to make my life a bit more simple. So I cut up a few of them. I probably think I had too many in the end, but that's okay. Then I'm going to take a piece of double-sided adhesive a sheet. This one is the waffle flower one. Since um, I used to only use the stick it one because I loved it and then I couldn't get a hold of it, I have found the Sizzix adhesive sheets are pretty good. I like the waffle flower ones more, um, but I still love my stick it adhesive. It is still wonderful. And I had this lovely lady send me some. It absolutely made my week. It blows my mind the kindness of people. Someone sent, someone thought to send that all the way to New Zealand just because to help me out. Put a smile on my face. It blows me away. It truly, I the whole card making community that we have, the group that we have over at Come Crafting with Natasha on Facebook. I am just so grateful. I'm so grateful for the support. I love the comment section. I love reading it. I love card making and I love creating these videos for you. So thank you so much. But anyway, I'm off on a tangent. I have come back with this detailed leaf die. Now this is one that I do have the stamp and coordinating die. I don't have many coordinating dies, so my choices were limited, but this one is going to work really well. So what I'm going to do is I am, I've cut out the die from it. I do have the stamp as well. I put some four inch wide uh, mint tape on the front, which is just a low tack tape. This is going to keep everything together because I'm actually going to cut this. So uh, if the leaf was by itself, it would sort of fall in two pieces because I'm cutting off the top and cutting off the bottom, which is where it's joined. Um, I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So the mint tape on the front keeps everything all together. And that means I can just plaster this down on the front of my card base because it has the double-sided adhesive on the back of it all ready to go. Now, of course, you don't have to go to do this. You could also just put a, um, a die cut, a plain white die cut in the front too. That would look lovely. It's just the fact that this is sort of a recessed image. You could also pop this up, which would look stunning as well. Lots of different options when it comes to this technique, but this one is sort of pretty simple, pretty fast, not too much lining up to do. Uh, and that's really what I was going for today. So once I have put that down, I can peel off the front front of the mint tape and I can use that mint tape over and over and over again. I just stick it on my workspace and then I keep using it. If I've got a big bit like that, then I'll rip it up into little pieces uh, if I need it for, you know, holding down dies and things, but make sure you reuse it. Then I've lined up my stamp to go right in the middle here. I'm keeping it simple by using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It's going to stamp beautiful and crisp black. And that is going to be right in the center of all of that color. So this is again on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. I'm going to add a little sentiment from the same stamp set here. And of course, all of the supplies are linked down below, but I think that you will have lots of them if you're wanting to make some of these cards. Some of them you don't need any really um, dies or anything like that. You could freehand them, absolutely. Now, one of the reasons that I picked this die and stamp when I was looking at them and choosing whether I wanted to purchase it was that when you do the die cutting, there is not a million pieces left over to do paper piecing with. In fact, there is just that one tiny piece to put in. So that's my kind of paper piecing. I can do it really, really easily. I'm going to finish this one off with a couple of the clear dew drops and this one is done too. Three gorgeous simple cards, all using the same color scheme, very little supplies, and didn't take too long to make. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, card making session today. Thank you so much for joining me. As usual, there'll be links down below, as well as ways that you can support my channel. Other than that, I will see you on the next video. Thanks, bye.